Hey everybody, welcome back! Today we're going to be talking about mastering and album publishing in Pyramix. With Merging's release of Pyramix 11.1, it's come with some great new features for the album publishing toolset. Let's take a look and see how it all works, and see how we can use these tools to save us time in some of the more tedious tasks in the mastering process. Now that CDs are becoming a thing of the past, we need to focus more on all the various deliverables you'll be generating for your clients. If you're doing a high resolution release, and I hope you are, make sure to work at that resolution. If you need a physical disc, we can do that easily later, but let's just make sure that we're going to work at whatever resolution the music was recorded and mixed in. The first thing we'll want to do is collect our materials. Here, I've got a folder full of masters that I've printed for a hip-hop project. You can also do this directly from the mix project you're working in, which is especially helpful if you're mixing a live event or some other kind of material where all the mixes would have been prepared in the same session. For individual mix sessions, I would advise against mastering anything until you have all the mixes ready so you can make decisions about the project collectively. At any rate, that's the great thing about Pyramix. You can make it do whatever works best for your workflow. Alright, let's start by sequencing the tracks and topping and tailing them to our liking. To make life easy, the first thing we'll want to do is make a new CD or SA CD album from the left hand of the CD Management tab. Also, I would recommend requiring your clients to provide you with a text document so you can copy and paste from it. With the main set of data input for the project, we can create a disk from here. Pyramix will ask us if we want to inherit the information from the disk, and we will say yes so we don't have to type it all in again. Once we've done that, we're ready to add our markers. You'll want to decide where you'd like your markers to go, and then start adding them. We'll add a marker to the beginning of track 1 using the Shift-Alt-Enter key command, or by selecting Add CD Start Marker from the Markers menu. While we're in this menu, we can take note of the Add CD Stop Marker key command and store that in our brains for later. So to easily add markers to our project, we can select our stereo track, and then use the tab key to jump to the heads of the tracks like so. Once we've added all of our start markers, we need to add one more essential marker to the project. The stop marker is only necessary at the very end of the project, so we'll consider how long we want the last track to play before the album repeats, and we'll add the stop marker here using alt Control enter And then we'll define the close of the project range with the 8 key. Also, to take full advantage of the album publishing tools, you want to make sure that the album artwork is loaded into the disk tree. Now that we've got our album laid out, we can verify that everything works like we want with these handy tools in the CD SACD tab. We can use the Alt-1 key command to see our whole project at once. Then we can navigate to the View tab to find Show CD Player. Now you may be thinking, but you said CDs were a thing of the past, what are you doing talking about all this CD related business? Well, the way markers work to index and Pyramix are built off of the CD markers, so we'll pretend that's what we're doing for the moment. We can use the CD player tool to audition what it would feel like for a listener to put in the disc, and use the navigation buttons while listening to the project. If we're satisfied with our work, we can move on to metadata. Now, we can enter information about each individual track, such as the song title, the ISRC information for each piece, as well as the CD text information. If you want to edit multiple items at once, you can simply select your desired range of tracks at the disc icon, and then input the information onto a single line, and Pyramix will populate it to all of them. Now that we've got our tracks all sequenced, our markers in, and our metadata is in place, we can export our project. The way to do this is to navigate up to Project, then Generate CD SACD Edited Master. From here, we can select the options appropriate for our delivery. So for this project, we're going to do a digital release and a CD master, but we want high-res digital release, and we want our CD project to conform to Redbook standards. No problem. We'll choose our file type and location, which is going to be Redbook, and then we'll make a folder to output the file to. If this was a high-res recording, we would want to do a 24- or 32-bit PCM export instead of Redbook, and make our digital materials from that. The MTFF format with a Q file is a real time saver in that circumstance. I'll show you why in a little bit. Then we'll click on Album Publishing, and we can create the various output formats we want, and select where they will go. Each of these output formats has customization options here. Just don't forget to add dither if you're changing the word length. Then, select where you want the digital release to be output, and click on OK to close the dialog. Back in the main window, you can set your dither, and also your loudness and true peak limiting if you didn't already set that up in your mixer. Because we've set up all of the metadata, it will pass that information along to our digital release, and we don't have to worry about that again. Also, with our MP3 and M4A outputs, it will include the cover art. A little side note here. If you're still using outboard gear at this point in the process, make sure that you've selected the real-time option, or it will print excluding any external inserts. 
So we can select our output bus, we'll wait for Pyramix to finish the rendering, and we'll move on to the last steps. Once Pyramix has finished rendering the mixer, it will then use that file to author the digital release. If you didn't check the real-time option, it will render several times faster than real-time, but I've sped up the video here for the purpose of this tutorial. To author our physical media for the project, we'll want to launch Merging's disk write. We can then navigate to the PMI we created in the last step, select our output, whether it's a DDP or a physical disk. From here, you can also take one last peek at your table of contents if you want before you officially sign off on the project. It's not uncommon for disk write to hang on my system when I change between various input sources, and especially when I select my Blu-ray drive as the output destination. After a few seconds, it will figure it all out and be ready to work. Also, in the DDP folder method of generating an image with this software, where to select the DDP output folder isn't so obvious. If you look at the little disclosure triangle to the right of record, you'll find two options here, verify and select folder. So we'll make a new folder and name it. Windows tends to have this problem where you need to click away from the newly created folder and then click on it again to make sure you've got the proper output selected before closing the dialog. Burn your disk or make your DDP, and that's it. You've just mastered a record in Pyramix. Now let's say our needs are a little different. Let's say that we made an album for a client a couple months ago, and they call us asking for a digital package. No sweat. Let's launch the album publishing tool, and we can load our PMI or our DDP. Then we can navigate to the artwork. The options here are identical to what we would see in Pyramix, so we can set up whatever we need and move on. If you notice when I hovered over the MTFF, the file size was 2.9 GB. I had made a high-res MTFF with Q to protect myself from exactly this situation. Because of this, I have a 32-bit 96K PCM file, identical to the resolution of the tracking, mixing, and mastering for this project. So I'm ready to use this handy standalone tool to export whatever files I need, and I don't have to log any additional metadata. We can then set up the album folder we want and click to start the process. After a short while, the app will finish the encoding and we're finished. One thing to take note of here, if we're starting from a DDP or a PMI that's 1644.1, that's the highest resolution we can make without upsampling, which you really wouldn't want to do because it would get the release blacklisted from MFIT status if you're a certified provider, since we changed the word length and the sample rate. I hope you learned a thing or two about mastering and album publishing in Pyramix. We'll see you next time.